There are over 7 billion people inhabiting our planet. This means there are over 7 billion different experiences occurring in each moment. With each experience, we create our own unique story. Oftentimes, the very stories we create can seem to separate us. But are we that different? The same stories that separate us can be the glue that binds us together. I'm Paul E. Hendricks, an author searching for more human connection. Welcome to The Bridge. Kiala Kanai spends his days as a social media marketer while helping others design the lifestyles they've always wanted. As a superpreneur, he seems indestructible. But like many of us, his trust in another was broken. This is Kiala's story about using heartbreak to his advantage. Each episode of The Bridge is centered on a thought-provoking theme. In this story, we explore triumph through adversity. 2005 was a good year. I uh, had the opportunity to fall in love with my best friend. We had been friends for a couple of years. We had met through a mutual friend. And uh, this is absolutely hands down the most gorgeous girl that I have ever laid eyes on. Um, and I knew that it was a blessing to have this opportunity. She was like my perfect opposite. I don't know if any of you have ever had that. Uh, she, was, she was excelling in life in every place that I was failing. So the attraction was, let's just say, massive. Um, first time I ever watched a sunset, actually, was with her and I was 23 years old. Grew up in Hawaii and never took the time to appreciate all the beauty around me. And those are the types of things that she introduced me to. The relationship was passionate beyond belief. Easily the most passionate thing that I've ever experienced. And the funny thing about passion is that, as any, most of you will probably know, it's also extremely volatile. Fast forward about to about 2009. We've been together for about four and a half years. Her mom's recently passed away. She's having a really hard time dealing with it. And a lot of that frustration is being taken out on the relationship. So we split up. And at first, I thought that was a really, really good thing. It's like, this is what needs to be done, because we couldn't keep going the way that we were going. That lasted about 48 hours. And then I was heartbroken. How would you define adversity? Adversity, a gift. A gift that we don't maybe recognize when it's happening, but I think it's always a gift. So I guess adversity would, I guess, be first experienced as a challenge or an obstacle. Uh, and depending on what we do with it, I choose to see it as a gift. Adversity doesn't... <clears throat> Things in life, obstacles and things, they don't happen to me, they happen for me, is my experience. And the moment that we shift and look at it through a new lens, we begin to see the opportunity that's hiding within it. And when we find that opportunity, we realize it was a gift all along. So I knew that there was nothing really that I could do to convince her that we could work it out. So I started looking at myself. And that's when I started my own personal journey of you know, personal growth. A friend of mine spoke to me about a seminar. Paul spoke briefly about it when he was telling his story. So I decided to take the seminar and just kind of find out more of like who I really am. I just wanted to be a better person because I knew that I couldn't change her in order to change the relationship. The only thing that I could change was me. That's the only thing that I have control over and the relationship. If I can, you know, bring more of my best self to it, the relationship will be better. On a whim, I send her an email <clears throat> asking her if she'll take the course with me and offering to pay for it. The night before the course begins, she emails me back. She says she'll take the class with me. So I think, great, but now it's 10.30 at night and I need to go find somebody that I can pay for her to be in the class tomorrow. I do, and we take the course together. <clears throat> it was four days that changed my life in, in the, some of the most incredible ways and for her as well. After the course ends, we start talking again. And we're, I mean, it is much, much better than I would have imagined prior. We start hanging out, things become affectionate, we become affectionate with each other again. 
and within about a month of finishing the course, we're in a full-blown relationship. And I felt like all my dreams had come true. We're communicating better. You know, the passion is still there. Uh, the sex is more intimate. Um, <clears throat> that's important, and there was no squiggly lines. Um, really, it was as if I had just won the biggest game of my entire life to have this opportunity to have her back. So after your first experience, like falling in this uh, passionate, crazy, uh, volatile was the word you even used, uh, falling in love, and then you guys broke up, you didn't talk for a while, what, what, what was it that brought you guys back together to give your relationship uh, another, say, round two? Uh, I guess I can't like pinpoint any one thing that brought us back together. Uh, I think the moment that I decided that I was going to make the relationship work, despite having no evidence that I could, I think that's the moment that the universe kind of gets behind that intention and began, you know, creating a series of events that led back to us uh, falling in love. About three months later, she's sleeping over at my place and I, uh, I get a text message, or she had left her phone in the living room next to me and I'm watching the television and a text message comes through. And I pick it up and I read it. And uh, I thought, well, this person must have texted the wrong person. So I, you know, kind of open it, I look, and then there's more texts from that person. Things like, I love you, baby, and I wish you were here, and I'm so sad that I don't get to see you right now, and romantic texts that weren't coming from me. I remember in that moment, I had a really, really hard time acknowledging that it was real. I kept, like, I'm going through, I'm like in text four going, wow, this person got the wrong number many times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking, I was in denial. <laughs> so I'm going through it for a while, and I can actually remember the moment that it hit me, and I was crushed. Crushed. I mean, there's no other word for it. To try to describe to you how I felt in that moment would be to cheat you, you of the experience. I mean, like, I can't do that. I can't describe this feeling. So what did you, well, I guess what I want to know is how did, what did you think about yourself? Like, did you feel some kind of guilt? Uh, guilt? Or what did you feel? I just felt devastated. I felt like, I mean, us getting back together, as I said in the story, it was like the greatest triumph that I had experienced up until that point in my life. Uh, it was like I won the biggest game that I had ever played. And then for when that came up, it felt like I had lost the biggest game I had ever played. Uh, it was the exact opposite of what I, exper what I had experienced, you know, recreating the relationship. So the next 30 days, I don't even walk out the front door of my house. I'm so depressed. <clears throat> Once I got through that phase, I was starting to talk to some friends about it. I was talking to a few friends, and I had friends that this had happened to, so I'm talking to them, and they basically all have the same story. Yeah, I know, it's so hard to trust people after this happens. Yeah, I know, it's so hard to be in a new relationship after this happens. I know, it's so hard to be open, and it's so hard to be vulnerable after something like this happens. I totally get it, Kiala. And after about the fifth person, I, I, I was on the phone, and I can remember the moment that this happened, too. I said to myself... I'm not going to turn this experience into that. So <clears throat> I sat down and I did a little exercise that I had learned in that seminar, and I thought about all the ways, all the choices that I had made to get me to that point. I chose to love her. I chose to trust her. I chose to be in the relationship with her. I chose to repair the relationship after it ended. I made many, 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 many choices that led me up to that state in my life, to that experience. And when I did that, and I owned my choices and allowed her to own her own, I began to forgive her. <clears throat> it wasn't easy by any measure, but it was possible and I could see that. I realized that 
who we are and what we do are two very different things, and I was never in love with what she did. I was in love with who she was. And I knew that who she really was was still there. So I forgave. So how did you take this experience of adversity and how, is, how does that now affect the relationships you have now? Uh, this ex that specific experience uh, allowed me, I guess one of the things that I learned from that was that she's a human being. You know? She's not perfect. She's, she's perfect and imperfect. You know what I mean? She's perfect. She's exactly as the universe would design her. And there's going to be <clears throat> mistakes along the way. Or well, how, how is it also affecting just, <clears throat> just not that relationship, but your relationships in general now? Right. Well, as, I, as, I, as I'm saying, so as I realized, okay, so what I learned was that I think a lot of us, when we create a relationship, we, ex we create expectations of what we want the other person to be rather than just to let them be who they really are. Once I realize that, I'm more open to relationships because I'm okay with the fact that everyone's going to be who they are. They're going to make mistakes. They're, they're gonna, they might let me down. Rather than have an expectation and want to define them and define the relationship and you know set borders around what's okay and what's not okay, you know inside this space we're good and when you get outside of this space we're not good. Rather than to hold someone to accountable for my value system, I rather just love means that I love and accept them regardless of what they do or say or uh, and regardless I guess of whether or not. I get hurt along that process. Uh, trust, I realized, has nothing to do with anyone else. This is my experience, of course, I can't define it for anyone else, but what I learned is that trust has nothing to do with trusting other people. Trust has everything to do with trusting myself so much that I know that I'm gonna be okay regardless of what everyone else out here does. And the, because I can trust myself to that level, I'm able to accept more people and not worry about whether they're going to hurt me or not because I'm going, to be, I'm going to be okay. If you or someone you know has a great story to tell, we'd love to hear it. Email us at thebridge at lightstyleonline.com. Follow me on Twitter at Paul E. Hendricks. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thebridgelive.